Well, people, I am just back from a uh, early screening of Cyrano. So I will be honest to you, I had no clue what type of film it would be. Now, obviously, look, I know the story. The story is a classic. You know what I mean? We had, so, there's been so many iterations of it, right? Cyrano de Bergerac. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, Steve Martin had um, Roxanne in 87. Dera Yipadu did uh, Cyrano de Bergerac in 1990. You know, there, there's just been so many different tellings of this story. You know, there's been cartoons, TV series. You know what I mean? It's a classic. It's a classic, people. So I knew the story. Just not what kind of story, what kind of version this would be. I just got the email and I was like, yeah. Especially seeing, um, you know, old Peter Dinkage up in there. I was like, yo, all right, Dinkage, don't let you down. So I checked it out. Now, there's a lot. There's a lot happening here. It, it's obviously, it's directed by Joe Wright, right, who is... I think we know Joe Wright can handle a period piece very well. You know, he did Pride and Prejudice. He did Atonement. He did Anna Caronia. Anna Caronia? Anna Karenia. Anna, you know, Russian broad, right? So he's handled period pieces well. He's also mixed it up, you know, Hannah and all of that. Yeah, he, he's done interesting things. Um, now, he did Women in the Window last year which we spoke about was it earlier this year it may have been earlier this year i forget people uh which i didn't mind right i i enjoyed that one to tell you the truth but uh yeah this is um i think you could say this is joe coming back to his roots right now obviously you know it is based on the edmund uh rosland you know uh, book, play, Serial de Bergerac from whew, all them years. Whew, I think it's like 16, 15, something, something, right? Uh, but it was then adapted by Erica Schmidt, who, uh, you know, brought it to, well, I think it was off Broadway, you know, so she did the play. Um, gosh in a few years back 2018 you know and uh just so happened she's married to peter dinkage so where in the original uh cyrano has a honker you know and she changed it up right she changed it up and had him be short of stature you know a little bit different and i think that's more of a thing because come on people we know <laughs> we know there's a, a lot of women there's, ugh, there's a lot of women shannon lee who um won't date men of a certain height right <laughs> ah, ding you know what i mean um so i think it's it's more of a thing that you could go yeah i buy that because i think a nose I think we, we've seen women date due to a big nose like that. I think that's an easier get around. But the height thing does seem to be a sticking point. So, yeah, Schmidt wrote the play. And Wright saw the play and was like, oh, genius. And decided to, you know, bring it to the big screen. Um, so what do you do when you see something that, that works so well? Why ruin it? <laughs> so he didn't. You know what I mean? He got Schmidt to come on board and write the screenplay. So, um, yeah, there you go. Now, it's produced by Tim Bevin, Erica Fellner, and Guy Healy. Cinematography is Seamus McGurry. It's edited by uh, Valerio Borelli. 
The music is from Aaron and Bryce Desner, which I will get to that. Um, and it is starring, well, I, I mention it, Peter Dinkage as Cyrano. Uh, we've got Hayley Bennett as Roxanne. Kelvin Harrison Jr. as Christian. Bashir Salahuddin as Labrette, the captain of the guard. Um, ben Mendelssohn as Degushi, as, uh, you know, the Duke pursuing Roxanne. And uh, Ray Straffen as Laray. I think Laray is the Gucci's friend. I think that's right. Um, yes. Uh, I know. I just saw it. Uh, yeah, my memory, people. My memory is bad. <laughs> now, the uh, gist is this. A man ahead of his time, Cyrano de Bergerac, dazzles whether with ferocious wordplay at a verbal joust or with brilliant swordplay in a duel. But convinced that his appearance renders him unworthy of the love of a devoted friend, the luminous Roxanne, Cyrano has yet to declare his feelings for her and Roxanne has fallen in love at first sight with Christian. Yes, yes, there you go, people. There you go. So, the other interesting thing, as I said, why, why, you know, ruin something that you felt was great? You know, in the play, as I said, Dinkage played Cyrano and Bennett played Roxanne, so they got pulled over into the film. Uh, and yeah, no, it works well. It works well. Now, like the, the the thing that grabbed me straight away because we see Roxanne getting ready. We're, you know, she's getting ready to go on a date. So there's a few things that you know what I mean. You find out in later life that girls be doing. You know what I mean? If they don't necessarily fancy the dude, but they're like, you know, but she's like, well. We're poor, I can't afford to go to the theatre, and I really want to see it. So I took the day, right? That's something you hear. That's something you find out, fellas. It's a thing. But we 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 see this, and I'm not gonna lie, right? The, one of the things that there's a couple of things that jumped out straight away. I mean, because she talks about the poverty, but doesn't look poor. You know, doesn't look poor. And I think that is one of the things. So if you are broke, you would think that it would show in your clothing and it would show you, you wouldn't look as healthy, right? Uh, you know, Bennett look, doesn't look like she's... Yeah, doesn't look like she's struggling, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which, you know, I know, it's a film. But there, there, there is that disconnect sometimes with these things, you know? And being put, you don't have to look shabby, but if the, if the clothes just look a little bit worn or like you've mended them a few times, you know, it's just little details like that. Also, it looks... It looks bright. Now, I wouldn't say as, as vibrant as, say, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet. Not that. But it looked a bit like... Um, oh, my God. I, I had it. I just had it. It was a Keith Ledger... A Keith? A Heath Ledger film. Um, Casanova. Yes. Remember the Keith Ledger film, Casanova? And it, it had a brightness about it, right? When, and I, I, what I mean is, when you look at, say, Pride and Prejudice and Atonement, there is a, a subtlety to the colouring, right? It more kind of feels of the time, 
but this is a brighter hue. So at the beginning, I was a bit like, hmm. And also, right, it doesn't look, because listen, we know the time. The countries are struggling a little bit, right? But the streets are clean and do you know, all of this. So there are a few things that throw. And then, then you know, Bennett starts to sing. Right? Oh, it's a musical. <laughs> I didn't know it was a musical. <laughs> kind of threw me for a minute, man. Ain't gonna lie. But, hey. I, I didn't hate the songs. And what you find going through the film, right, there, there's certain songs that, uh, uh, that buy through, you know, throughout the film, we hear that song, you know, it, it gets played a few times, you know, to reflect certain scenes. And sometimes it's at a different key, right, a different pitch, you know, to kind of set the, 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 the different types of mood or... Um, incarnation in how it's being sung. And I was like, oh, no, that works very well, right? There was a, a song after um, Christian and Roxanne uh, meet up face to face. And after the, you know, the first eye to eye situation. Um, but yes, the song there, it, it kind of reminded me of... of uh, Florence and the Machine, you know, the, like the bass and the beat and the, oh, the tempo. And there's another song, it's like, tell them, dum, 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 tell them I fall. Do, 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 mm, 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 mm. And I'm like, oh, oh, I like this song. And also it's like, ah, it reminds me of the national. Right, and a few of the other songs, I'm like, yo, that really has a national vibe to it. You know what I mean? Ah, it's interesting. Interesting. And um, yeah, it does, because Desna on Aaron and Bryce, they're from the freaking national. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that sometimes you hear music and you can be like, yo. Do I know who that's from? You know what I mean? But yeah, as the film plays, you know, there, there, there's, you know, because as I said, look, at, at the very start, I'm, I'm kind of thrown a little bit, but, you know, straight away, when they get to the, when they get to the theatre, you know, and we see this, and don't get me wrong, as I said, look, it looks a little bright, but it looks nice. Oh, it looks very nice. We've got very good camera work that's really kind of opening these scenes up to us you know bring us into what's going on and yeah we get to the theater and and there's a a flow there's a flow to the word play right and then Cyrano comes in and man you know they work with a bass you know, in and Cyrano comes. And yeah, there is this word play, this back and forth. It's kind of like a little rap battle going on, right? And the cadence and everything like that. There is a Hamilton esqueness to it all. Now, not to say it's aping Hamilton by any means, but you do kind of feel that there, there is an influence there, you know? Uh, but yes, you know, and you know, you, you just get this, this movement of the words, this flow, this choreography that really just works well. And that straight, I'm in now. I am in. You know, I mean, that just grabbed me. And also, it's just the way Dinkage commands a scene. All right, it's like, this is the thing. Peter Dinklage kills it in this film. Oh, he really does. Like, the sword fights and all of that, you're like, 
Of course. Of course you can't fuck with Tyrion Lannister, son. You know what I mean? And you buy it. You believe it. That's the thing. You, you believe the fighting. It is fun, right? Along with a lot of other things in the film. Like there is a, <laughs> there's a moment with a meeting in a bakery and we get this whole kind of segment, this dance situation, right? And they're dancing with bread, holding up bread and kneading and making the kneading of bread very sensual, you know what I mean? But there's this dance thing and it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but very fun. And it works, right? It works. So you're like, yeah, I'm down with it. You are in with the film, people. You are flowing with the film. You know, you're, you're caught on this wave of just lyricism. You know what I mean? And we have great acting. Now, as I said, look, Dinkage kills it. Dinkage kills it. We know what Dinkage does. But Kelvin Harrelson Jr., you know what I mean? I, I, I first remember seeing him in Waves. And Waves was an odd one for me. It was because it felt like a two different films kind of meshed together. Now, the performances were very good, but I didn't necessarily resonate completely with the film. But, oh, man, when I saw him then in Loose, now on Netflix, people, check it out. It's great. I was sold. I was sold on Harrelson. And then ever since then, He's just been killing it. And again, kills it in this, right? Kills it in this, you know? Uh, Bashir Salahuddin, great job. Ben Mendelsohn, great job. Haley Bennett, plus a great job as Roxanne. You know what I mean? Like, all the performances are very, very good. And that sells you on the film. Right, because there's moments of catch breath, you know, just this the the whole beginning with the eyes meeting in the theater between Christian and Roxanne. You are sold on that, <laughs> you are sold on that, and you are brought into the story because you know it's this whole pretense of love at first sight, right. And, you know, you know, I ain't going to lie. You do watch the film and you think, Roxanne is such a dolt. <laughs> such a dolt. Especially, you know what I mean, when someone else is talking and you're like, wait, you don't notice? You don't recognize the voice, Roxanne? Come on. Or just the word iteration, you know, the writing style. You don't. Come on, Roxanne. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. I, I, I think with this story, I think a lot of people can see themselves as Cyrano. You know what I mean? Like this unrequited love or the perceived unrequitedness of the love, right? There, there's people that you think, oh my gosh, I really like this person, you know? And not just on a physical basis, but just personality rise, because that's established at the start, right? They 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 talk about Roxanne and it and it's you know um La Root and um Cyrano. You know, and they're talking about her and being like there's a conceit here in there, there's these things about her, but there's something else that resonates that captures Cyrano. And I think that's the thing. You know what I mean? Look, well, there, there's people that you've connected with on a certain level, just through conversation. Now, yes, you, you think they're attractive, but a lot of the times the attractiveness comes from knowing someone, right? Because, listen, I don't know about you, but there's definitely people that you think, oh, they're rather attractive, and you speak to them, and you're like, oh, no. Hey, we just don't don't get on, right? And and whether you it's because you think, oh man, intellectually we're not on the same level, or 
man, I don't agree with their views, but then they're not attractive anymore. You know, there's something that's been diminished. So I think there's this part of this story that really connects with you, you know, and maybe it is because I'm, yeah, you find yourself in a situation <laughs> where, you're, where you're feeling like Malvang is zero on the version right, right now, you feel me? But it might be that. But no, the story speaks, man. And I, I dug the story. And, you know, just how it's set and how it's told, right? With the camera work, we get a lot of close-ups that bring us in. Or just the way certain scenes are framed, you know, looking down a corridor and things like that. Or, you know, an avenue, you know, they're in the middle of the street and we see it and it... It, oh man, you're now drawn into the film, you know, and it and it feels like we're there. It feels like it's in the air. You look past, you know, the brightness, the cleanliness, you know, you look past those things, and now it's just a story, right? Now it's just this telling, this interpretation the performances, just all of this stuff, right? Now you're on this. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I very much enjoyed it, you know? Now, I, I they did age Cyrano at the end. Didn't age Roxanne, <laughs> but they did age Cyrano, right? And, oh man, it, it, you know, it's a bittersweet story, right? And I, I did, oh, the poignantness of the end does hit you. Does hit you, man. Ugh. I, yeah. I sometimes look at myself and think, wow, why? <laughs> why have you got a heart, you son of a bitch? You're meant to be a cold motherfucker. Ugh. But no, it, it, it speaks to me, man. I enjoyed this film. I really did. And I think if you liked the story, if you liked the previous iterations, you know? If you like these actors and actresses, I think you'll dig it. I think you will enjoy it. If you liked Hamilton, I think you will enjoy it. Now, if you didn't like Hamilton, it's not to say this is, you know, a carbon copy. It's, a, a, you know, by the numbers. No, 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 no. But what I mean is, there is a, as I said, look, there's a flow to the wordplay in Hamilton, and there is with this. It's its own animal, but I think, yeah, if you liked it, it will speak to you. If you didn't like it, there is this thing about it, though. It's the story itself, and the story itself is, as I said, look, it's great, and I think we all resonate with it to some degree. Right, whether you're a Roxanne, a Christian, a Cyrano, you know what I mean, or maybe a Deguchi, right? You might be a motherfucking Deguchi. <laughs> Either way, man, I yeah, I think you you dig it. And hey, if Dinkage isn't up for an Oscar, I would be surprised because, as I said, look, the performance is golden. He kills it, kills it. And so does everyone else, people. So, yeah, I, I, I think this, well, I don't know what's going to happen come when this drops. But if the cinemas are open, it's definitely well worth going to see on that big screen, you know. Just because the way the music works, right, because it does feel like a, you know, a supporting character in the piece. And you do find yourself getting caught up with, the, like, ah, oh, man, I, I I walked out humming. Mm -hmm. I, oh, shit. Okay. Okay. So I think that speaks very highly of this film, people. So, yes, go see Cyrano. I think it will capture you. I really think it will. I think it's a good day film as well, people. There you go. Especially because I think it shows a lot of lessons. Shows a lot of lessons that how you should be 
doing your thing in a relationship. I will say, I do, I did think the epiphany that Christian has, it is rather quick, but eh, you know, I wasn't mad at it. Wasn't mad at it. But yeah, people, Cyrano, oh, 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 well worth it. Well 